While studying case control studies, we said the disadvantage to it is the high chance of having bias. But while studying cohort studies, we said certain biases can be minimized. In today's video, we are going to understand what a bias is and the different types of it in both studies. Let's begin by first understanding what a bias is. When we think of bias, we often think of discrimination. But bias plays an important role in having an impact on public health dentistry as well. Simply put, bias is any error that happens at any step while performing an epidemiological study. Let's first talk about the bias seen in a case control study. To remember the five biases, remember the mnemonic CM equals to SBI. The C stands for confounding factor. If a clear selection of cases and controls isn't done properly, a confounding bias may take place. To prevent this, matching can be done in case control studies. For example, if we were to study the relationship between tobacco chewing and oral cancer, we need to make sure that both case and control groups contain people of the same age group since the risk of oral cancer seemingly increases with age. Matching protects against an unexpected association between the matching factor and the disease. The M stands for memory bias. At times, when the cases and controls are asked questions about their past history, it may be more likely for the cases to recall the occurrence of certain events compared to the controls, who are healthy people. This is because diseased people have a better track of keeping hospital records as compared to healthy people since visits aren't as frequent. Next, the S stands for selection bias. This is also known as diagnostic bias wherein the diagnosis itself is more likely to be biased if the exposure is present in history. The cases and the controls may not be representative of cases and controls in the general population. This bias can be best controlled by prevention. The B stands for Bergsonian bias. This bias arises because of different rates of admission to hospitals for people with different diseases and occurs in hospital-based studies. This bias is named after the doctor who recognized this problem, Dr. Joseph Bergson. Lastly, the I stands for interviewer's bias. The interviewer may either lack depth in controls while the cases are thoroughly worked up or the interviewer might know the hypothesis as well as knowing who the cases are, leading to bias. If the interviewer has prior information on who the cases are, he'll question them more thoroughly than the controls regarding the positive history of the suspected causal factors. Thus, these were the five biases that may occur in a case control study. Let's see the different types of bias in a cohort study now. We can use the mnemonic SIFPC, where S is selection bias, I is information bias, F is follow-up bias, P is post hoc bias and C is confounding bias. The selection bias, like read in a case control study, occurs when a group studied does not reflect the same distribution of characteristics as occurring in the general population. Next is the information bias, which can happen when there is an error in the classification of individuals with respect to the outcome variable. This may result from misdiagnosis of cases or measurement of errors. For example, there have been times when an adenomatoid odontogenic tumor has been misdiagnosed as a calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor. Since these are differential diagnoses of each other, there are many cases of a misdiagnosis mix-up. Third, if the rate of disease is different among those lost to follow-up, then the relationship between exposure and outcome may be changed. This is called the follow-up or the dropout bias. Confounding bias, as discussed in case control, will occur when other factors associated with outcome and exposure variables do not have the same distribution in the exposed and unexposed groups. Two of the most common confounding factors are age and tobacco. In case where we have to study the effect that a younger age group of people will have on their health due to the habit of chewing tobacco, we must ensure that the cohort group and the comparison group both have people of the same age group since the risk of oral cancer only increases with age. If matched properly among both groups, this bias can be prevented. Lastly, in case we test a hypothesis that the study was not designed to test but is suggested by the data, this is known as data dredging. 
Finding an association between this data dredging and then using the same data to test its significance may lead to unwanted conclusions, and this is known as post hoc bias. A quick recap. The case control study has five biases. Confounding bias, memory bias, selection bias, Bergsonian bias, and information bias. All these can be remembered with the help of the mnemonic CM equals SBI. While the five biases under cohort study can be listed as selection bias, information bias, follow-up bias, confounding bias, and post hoc bias. These five can be remembered with the mnemonic SIFPC. Thus, to conclude, to ensure the bias does not affect the quality of care, it's important for dental professionals to be aware of their biases and take steps to address them. By taking these steps, dentists can provide equitable and effective care to all patients, regardless of their background or socioeconomic status. For more such videos, Download our app and watch videos seamlessly and learn through visually engaging mind maps. We hope we made public health dentistry slightly better for you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and see you guys in the next one.